So every once in a while, a piece of technology comes along that just completely changes the game. Think about the first iPhone. It wasn't just a new phone. It was a new way of thinking about what a phone could be. It put the internet in our pockets, an app store at our fingertips. It fundamentally shifted how we communicate, work, and live. These moments don't happen every day. They are rare. They are powerful. They often start not with a bang, but with a quiet line of code. An idea that seems a little out there, a little ahead of its time. That one idea can act as a single spark, igniting a fire of innovation that reshapes our digital world. Foundational shifts, the kind that make you look back a decade later. The very first smart contract deployed on the Ethereum blockchain. Alright, so before we can get to the smart contract we have to talk about where it lives. Let's break down Ethereum. Forget the complex charts and the crypto jargon for a second. At its core, Ethereum is like a global, shared computer. Imagine a single massive computer that isn't owned by any one person or company. Google, Apple. Instead, it's run by thousands of computers all over the world, all working together. It's a decentralized network. This means no single entity can shut it down. Well, the internet we use today is built on servers owned by companies. Your data, your accounts, your digital life, it all lives on someone else's computer. You're trusting them to keep it safe, to not misuse it, and to not suddenly change the rules on you. Ethereum was designed to be different. It was proposed in 2013 by a young programmer named Vitalik Buterin. He saw Bitcoin, a decentralized system for money, and thought, what if the blockchain could do more? If Bitcoin is a pocket calculator great at one thing, Ethereum is like a full-blown smartphone. It has a native currency Ether. Ether powers the network, like electricity for the global computer. But the real magic is you can build apps on this smartphone. These aren't your typical apps. So in simple terms, Ethereum is a programmable blockchain. It's a foundation. It's a platform that lets developers worldwide build applications not controlled by any central authority. And the tool that makes all of this possible is called a smart contract. So what is a smart contract? The name sounds a little intimidating, but the concept is actually pretty straightforward. Think of a regular contract like a lease for an apartment. It's a set of rules and agreements between people. If you pay the rent on time, you get to live here. If you don't, there are consequences. The problem with regular contracts is that they require a middleman, a lawyer, a bank, a broker. This can be slow, expensive, and sometimes you just have to trust that the middleman will do their job correctly. A smart contract aims to solve that. A smart contract is basically a program that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. It's like a vending machine. You put in the money, and the machine automatically gives you the snack you chose. There's no cashier needed. The rules are baked right into the machine's code. If this amount of money is inserted, then release that specific item. A smart contract does the same thing, but for digital assets and agreements. It's an if-then statement that lives on the blockchain, and because it's on the blockchain, it's unstoppable and can't be tampered with. This matters because it removes the need for a trusted intermediary in many situations. The code is the enforcer. The contract executes exactly as written every single time. Imagine setting up a crowdfunding campaign. If the campaign reaches its goal, funds are automatically released. If it doesn't, funds are automatically returned. No platform cuts, no manual management. So, who was behind that very first smart contract? And when did this happen? The Ethereum network officially launched on July 30th, 2015. This launch phase was known as Frontier, a wild, new, largely untested digital landscape. It was the early days, the calm before the storm. The platform was live. The global computer was running, but it was still an empty canvas, waiting for its first brushstroke. And that first stroke came from one of Ethereum's co-founders. The first user-deployed smart contract on the Ethereum mainnet was created by Gavin Wood. Gavin Wood a British computer scientist and towering figure in Ethereum. He was co-founder and the first CTO. Vitalik Buterin wrote the white paper, Gavin Wood translated that vision into functional code, he wrote the first functional implementation of Ethereum, he coded the programming language Solidity, he wrote the yellow paper, the technical bible of the EVM. On August 7, 2015, eight days after launch, Gavin Wood deployed a simple smart contract. It wasn't a complex financial instrument or a game, it was a basic registrar contract. Think of it as a simple registry, or a digital guestbook. It did one thing, associate a name, a string of text, with an address on the Ethereum network. A foundational piece of infrastructure, a proof of concept. It proved Ethereum's core idea worked on the live network. 
This contract, while simple, was a monumental step. The first app on the Ethereum App Store. For Gavin Wood and the other core developers, this was a moment of both intense pressure and incredible excitement. They had spent nearly two years building this complex machinery from the ground up. The Frontier launch was a go for the public but internally it was a high-stakes test. They were pushing their creation out into the wild, knowing it was still rough around the edges. The tools were basic, the documentation was sparse, and the risk of critical bugs was very real. Deploying that first contract was the ultimate test flight. Was this multi-million dollar project going to fly? Imagine the scene. It's not a fancy office. It's likely just wood at his computer, probably in the middle of the night, surrounded by monitors filled with code. The process itself would have been methodical. He would have written the contract in Solidity, the language he himself had largely invented. Then, he would use the command line tools, no fancy user interfaces back then, to compile the code into bytecode that the Ethereum virtual machine could understand. Finally, he would craft and sign a special transaction to deploy this code onto the live blockchain, paying a small amount of Ether for the computational gas fees. The reaction wasn't a global news event, it was a quiet confirmation within a small dedicated community. When the transaction was confirmed and the contract address was generated, it was a moment of profound validation, it worked. The logs showed the contract successfully created on the blockchain, its code permanently etched into the distributed ledger. For the team, it was proof that their theoretical machine was a practical reality. It was relief, triumph, and the green light for the future. There were immense challenges. The term frontier was chosen for a reason. The network was not guaranteed to be stable. The developers were navigating uncharted territory, debugging a live, decentralized supercomputer with real value at stake. That one, simple contract was the pebble dropped in the pond. The ripples are still expanding today in 2025, and they have completely transformed the digital landscape. What started as a simple guestbook has evolved into a multi-trillion dollar ecosystem built on smart contracts. Every single decentralized finance application runs on smart contracts. Lending protocols like Aave decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. They are just far more complex, handling billions of dollars in automated peer-to-peer -peer transactions without banks. This invention didn't just stay in the world of finance. The art world was completely upended by NFTs. And what is an NFT? At its core, it's a special type of smart contract. It's a contract that creates a unique, verifiable digital token that can represent ownership of anything. A piece of digital art, a collectible, even a concert ticket. The entire creator economy is being reshaped by this technology, allowing artists to connect directly with their audience. This all traces back to the ability to run code on a blockchain. The impact extends even further into what we now call Web3, the idea of a decentralized internet. Decentralized social media platforms, secure voting systems, transparent supply chains, player-owned gaming economies. Each of these innovations is a direct descendant of that initial experiment by Gavin Wood. Autonomous, transparent, tamper-proof provided a powerful new toolkit for developers looking to build a more equitable and user-centric internet. It has fundamentally changed how we think about ownership, trust, and value online. That first smart contract wasn't just a technical achievement, it was a philosophical statement. It opened the door, and for the past decade, a generation of innovators has been building the future one block at a time.